So in this video, we are going to take some time and start to look at or introduce ourselves to the idea of logarithms. So you can see here on my screen, we've got a, a curve and this may look familiar to you. It's the curve y equals 2 to the power of x. In other words, it's an exponential curve. It starts sort of low and then it accelerates at an accelerating rate. And the bigger my value of x is, the sharper this is going to increase. So something you should have come across before is an exponential curve. Now, I'm going to use this as my basis to get us into logarithms because there is a connection between the two. And if I was to take this line here, this is just a linear line, y equals x that runs through the origin. And we're going to use that as, as a reflection uh, line. So I'm going to reflect that exponential curve onto the other side. So if this was a, 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 a line of reflection, this would be the reflection of my exponential curve. And guess what? This curve, for example, has the equation x equals log base 2y. And we call this a logarithmic curve. And you can see this connection already starting to emerge between exponentials and logarithms. In fact, they are functions that are the inverse, in other words, the, the opposite of each other. So exponentials and logarithmic functions are inverse of each other. So there's some interesting connections that that has for us. So for example, if I was to take the point 2, 1 on my logarithmic curve, and I'm going to reflect that point across the same line of reflection. So going exactly on the opposite side of that, I get to the point 1, 2. Now, I don't know if you can see what I can see there, but those numbers are both the same, just interchanged and swapped around. Let's try another point and see if we get the same result. So the point 4, 2 on my logarithmic curve, if I reflect that, on that same reflection line, y equals x, I get the point four, sorry, 2, 4 on my exponential curve. Once again, the same coordinates just swapped. My x and my y values swap. So there's another interesting connection between exponentials and logarithmic curves is that the points y equal, uh, reflected on y equals x are interchanged. All right, so more connections happening. Now you can see, hopefully, if I look at this, uh, this was my exponential formula here, y equals two to the power of x. There's a y, there's a two, and there's an x. And down here in my logarithmic curve, there's a y, a two, and an x. And the only thing added here is the word log. So we're gonna spend a bit of time playing with that because uh, we can we can convert or we can we can evaluate a logarithm from an exponential and vice versa. So we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Why are they important? Uh, logarithmic functions are incredibly important in science and engineering. So you might have heard, for example, the Richter scale that we measure the strength of earthquakes on is a logarithmic function. Um, decibels for sound, pH values for acidities. There's a whole heap of applications in science and engineering where logarithms are important and come into play. Let's have a look at the connection in the equations between these two, exponentials and logarithms. Here's an exponential, 3 squared equals 9. The log, the logarithm of that is log base 3, 9 equals 2. That's how we would say that. We would say log base 3 of 9, log base 3 of 9 equals 2. Two. Now, once again, you can see here there's a 3, a 9, and a 2. A 3, a 9, and a 2 also in my exponential. So here is, uh, I guess, the, 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 the formula or the, the sort of the map between the two. If I've got an exponential that has a base of a to the power of x equals y, then the logarithm for that is log base a of the y equals x. Now, let's put some actual numbers in there and play with a couple just to see because it's not as confusing as it sounds once you've sort of got it in your head. Just getting it in there, I guess, is the hardest part. Here's my exponential, 2 to the power of 5 equals 32. Now, I'm going to write this in uh, its logarithm, uh, its logarithmic form. Log, now I've got a base on here of 2, so 2 becomes the little base in my log. So with the base in my index form, it's also the base in my log. 32 is the value, so I'm going to put that next 
right, the value that this became. And all that leaves now is the index, which is the pit part that goes on the other side. So I had a, oops, that's just. So I had a base of two, a base of two. I had an index of five, so the index of five goes over here, and the value of 32 goes into here. Let's look at a couple more just till we get comfortable and in, in, uh, in writing these what we call equivalent statements. Okay, the equivalent uh, exponential for a logarithmic functional function, and vice versa. Let's say I've got log base 10 of a thousand equals three. Log base 10 of a thousand equals three. I've got a base for my log. I've got the index value and the value of the actual exponential function. So let's put them together because in an exponential, I've got a base, I've got an index, and I've got a value. So I just take them out of my logarithmic function and I rearrange it. My base, in this case, was 10. The base of the log is also the base of my index form. The index is the value on the right hand side here in my logarithm. So I put the index of three equals the value of a thousand. So now I've written that the equivalent statement to log of base 10 of a thousand equals three is this 10 to the power of three equals a thousand. So hopefully you can see that structure. I had a base, my index and my value. Let's go the other way. I've got a base of 2, so my log will have base 2, because the base here is 2. The value of the, uh, sorry, the value of my index, my exponential, goes in next, and then equals the index of my exponential goes on the right hand side here. So once again, hopefully you can see that structure. Got a base, the value, and the index. Okay. The base was 2, my index was 6, and my value, which goes in here, was 64. All right, we uh, the, some of the questions you're going to be doing shortly when you practice these are evaluating some of these logs. So here we go. Log base 2 of 8. What does that equal? I want to come up with a value on the right-hand side. Now, I'm going to rewrite that, and I'm going to put x in for my unknown, because I can do that for a value that I don't know that I'm trying to evaluate. So some number, log base two of eight equals some number. Now I'm going to rewrite that, the equivalent statement in its index form. I've got a base of two, I've got an index of x and a value of eight. So two to the power of x equals eight. Now can I come up with a value for x? Well, if I think about this, what do I have to put in here to make this true? Two to the power of something equals eight. Now I can see that that's two times two times two in other words, 2 to the power of 3 gets me 8. So my value for x must be 3. And we're done. So log base 2 of 8 equals 3. How about this one? <clears throat> Similar idea, but there's a little extra step or two in here. Log base 3 of 1 ninth. Once again, I'm going to rewrite that with a equals x in it because I want to uh, come up with a, a value for x. I want to evaluate what this log equals or turns out to be. So in this case, I've got a base of 3, I've got a value of 1 ninth and an index of x. So I'm going to write my base of 3 with my index of x equals my value of 1 ninth. Now, having a look at this, I can do some work with this 1 over 9. I can see that 1 over 9 is actually 1 over 3 squared. It's the same thing. 9 is 3 squared. <coughs> now, 1 over 3 squared, hopefully if I can remember back from my index laws, I know that 1 over something is a negative index. So I can rewrite this as 3 to the power of negative 2. 1 over 3 squared is the same thing as 3 to the negative 2. And here's why this is important, excuse me, <clears throat> is because I've now got 3 to the power of x and I've rewritten this as 3 to the power of negative 2. So I can see from that, x must equal negative 2 right, to make this true. So I've evaluated my log. This log here equals negative 2. Now, if that was confusing for you, pause it, go back and just go through that step by step again. One last one, once again, it's something a little bit different here. 
I've got my log, can I evaluate this? So in other words, I'm looking for something with a base of 10, index of x equal to 7. Now that, there's nothing that jumps out at me there as being straightforward. This is not going to be an integer, because 10 to the 1 gives me 10, which is more than that. 10 to the 0 gives me 1, which is less than that. So this is going to be between 0 and 1. Now, here's where your scientific calculator comes in to the rescue. You have a button on your scientific calculator, which is just simply marked L-O-G, log. That actually means log with a base of 10. Okay, so it's log base 10, which is handy because that's what I've got in my question. So this log button is actually log base 10. So that means I could now go ahead and solve this by hitting log button, which gives me log base 10 of 7, hit the 7 button, equals, and I'm going to get a value of 0 0.845. Now that makes sense to me, because remember I said this has to be between 0 and 1 to give me my answer. So we've evaluated that, and I can go back and check it. I could reverse the other way in my calculator. I could put 10 to the power of 0 0.845, and I get a value of Seven. Guys, that was our intro to logarithms. I know we covered a bit of territory. Hopefully it all made sense, but like I said, feel free to pause it, rewind, re revisit any bits uh, that you want to cover again, and uh, good job. Well done.